<laughs> it's one a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on Q96, the country's top radio station, the big one, the one everyone's talking about, and the one everyone is listening to. So much to get through tonight, so little time to do it in. So without further ado, I shall give you the telephone number. That is 01414290963. Get it down with a stub of a hard black pencil and a threepenny jot of nay batter beside your telephones. 01414290963. The wizard of the big switchboard will take your call. He will sign for the daft, and I'll tell you what we're talking about, because the lines are jam, 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 stowed out the door, and step it through already. We're talking tonight about the students. Are students a lazy lot of layabouts? Smelly, smelly layabouts, sponging off the state. Well, I, I can't believe this. I'm laughing my head off here. Unprecedented stress the students are suffering because of exams. Of course, this will be drink and drugs related, a lot of it. Soaring debts, that's because they cannot handle money. Time pressures, the suffering from pressure of time. No wonder if they kip in all the time till midday. I don't think we should lend students any money. So there you are. That's it. It's as simple as that. I don't think we should lend students any money. And I don't know if you saw the story in one of the papers today about the greyhound that uh, was left without food or water. And um, it was a chap in Coat Bridge. They found her in a flat, absolutely emaciated. So there we are, left for dead. And uh, the guy actually got fined just 690 quid for cruelty. I think we should be looking at life sentences for cruelty to animals. 01414290963 on that one. Do you blame the left-wing socialist government we have in for the death of the family? The number of single parent families in Scotland is set to soar by a third over the next 20 years heralding the end of the traditional family. New figures show the growth of one parent families is now greater in Scotland than anywhere else in the UK. Now I would send a message to all the men listening, never ever do it with somebody without your hat and coat on if you're not married to them because that's what's fueling these single mothers. The women are out, they think we can do without a man. All we need is a man for the one to buckle my shoe and we can get that by flashing a bit of knicker. I say, no, 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 no. That's not the way it's going to work from now on. McClue has speak and the men should pop on their hat and coat before even so much as a sniff of the one to buckle my shoe. You can tell us what you think about that. 0141 429 should John Prescott have to give up his perks just because he's had a little bit of the house, your father? Allegedly, he's lost uh, none of his political skills. So there you go. So should he have to, to uh, give that up? And also, should we stop women drinking? The teenage girls are more likely than the boys to binge drink. Now, we need the teenage girls for the next generation of wives and mothers, and we want our offspring to be healthy. So as far as I'm concerned, we should stop the women drinking. Now, that's enough. I've got stacks more for you, but I must go to the telephones because we are absolutely stowed out. Ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and ring until you are blue in the pus as much as you can, but keep ringing and ringing and ringing. Uh, you know, if you don't get answered right away, please, please don't panic. Remember, this is a very, very, very big phone-in program on a very big radio station. Off I go to the telephones. I'm talking to Queenie, who's in her broth. Hello, Queenie. Hello, Scotty. How are you doing? How are you doing, sir? Uh, you doing? I've what? never been on the Phone to you before, but I'm just, I was thinking that was a terrible thing about that cruelty, that guy with the yes. dog, cruelty animal, yes. Coat Bridge. And the reason why I'm phoning is, Manny Sandra A. McGregor, 
from Beale Drive in Glasgow had asked me to phone you, so she'll be listening in, eh, uh, Scotty? Hello, Auntie Sandra, dinky do. <laughs> 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 Listen, it's lovely. And are you listening up in the broth there? I'm, I'm actually trying to get you on the... What, 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 what thing were you, on, Scott? On, on the internet? No, no, on, on the radio. Well, if you're in her broth, it might be a wee bit shushy. Uh-huh, well, that's what I was thinking. You know, I'm getting the internet I'll tell in. you what, there were 96.3 on the FM. 96.3. 96.3, so give it a try. I'll give it a try, know, Scotty. You know, it's a, it's a fine night tonight, and you it's never know your luck. As you well. know. It's actually Montrose I'm in, Scotty. Oh, you're in Montrose? Yeah. Oh, it's, I love Montrose. Uh-huh. Oh, beautiful. I listen, to your, I listen to your sister station a lot. I'll no mention it, though. Yes, no, no, no. We we know the one you mean. That's no problem at all. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll give you a wave. <laughs> in, fact, right. in fact, we might, we might give you... Uh, how many waves should we give you, would you say? Oh, as many as you like, Scotty. What, what, what sort of number of waves would you like us to give you? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> well, your pro- I, I was listening to your programme last week. I was down visiting Monty Sandra, so... Yes, uh, excellent. Well, Listen, you come on any time because you're very welcome. Thank you very much. And how's things up in their broth? Are they still doing the smokies? You're still doing the smokies, Scotty, yes. Yeah. a bit of a stoosh over that, wasn't it? They're still doing the smokies, yes. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. There was a wee stoosh about it. The Europeans were saying they would need to put in extra this, that, and the next thing. Uh-huh. Stuff they'd been doing for hundreds of years yeah, up there. That's right. I don't know, it's a lovely part Have of the world. Have Mont- uh, you been up at Montrose? Oh, eh? yes, I know our broth and I know Montrose. Yes. You know, and the beach at Montrose is beautiful. Beautiful, that's Right. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Lovely. I, I, I stayed in uh, uh, an hotel in the main street. I won't mention any names. No, no. In the main street uh, years and years and years ago. I, yeah. think, I think it was uh, preheating days. Oh, right. So it was quite, it was winter. Uh-huh. And it was quite fresh. Right. And that was inside. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You're some man. So, no, but I was actually listening to your program last week. I was down in Glasgow for a week there and I was listening to your program. Did you like it? Yes, I did. Oh, that's good. Well, I think it, it's brilliant, actually. We yeah. need to do more. Do you think it would go well in Montrose? Oh, I think it would. Oh, I think it would go <laughs> a treat. Uh, <laughs> definitely would. And our broth. Our broth is well. And Dundee as well. And Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the old joke, isn't it? Is Jeannie coming out? No, she's at our broth. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, right enough, Scotty. All that nonsense. Anyway, if you just if you say, tell my auntie Sandra McGregor I'm asking her. for her. I will send her love Thanks. and uh, and love to your good self. Thank you, and Scotty. We'll maybe hear from you next time you're done. Thank you. Yes, certainly, Scotty. All the best when you get when you get the internet in, you get on to Q96.net. Q wait a minute, Q wait, can I t- I know that, Scotty? Of course you can, of course you can. Q Q for Queenie. Nine, that's me. That's Q96. You. And then ninety six dot N E T dot N E T. I've got that mapped down, Scotty. Lovely, lovely to talk to you. And you too. Take care now. Have a great night and God bless. Now, Andrew, who's in Black Hill. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. You there, Andrew? Andrew in Black Hill, can you hear me? Hello, Andrew. Can you hear me there? Are you there, Andrew? Right, listen, I'm going to have to move on, folks. If you're not there, when I call your name, I have to move on. David and Kilmarnock. All right, Scotty, how's it going, mate? How are we doing, bud? Dinky-doo. Aye, dinky-doo, pal. Andrew, oh. why'd you put your phone down, mate? What have you done? No, I, Andrew, I said, why did you put your phone down? Oh, I don't, oh, dear knows, dear knows. Yeah. Listen, if I if I knew that, he wouldn't have put it down, I'd have told him. Oh, no. Him. You but, know? Um, so you were there last night? People, and for, sometimes people bottle it when they hear they get their name called and they go, oh, oh, no. <laughs> you know, their, their bottle goes. You busy last night? Oh, busy. Busy last night. I could have got on to about three in the morning, but still have been busy. You mean a call, eh? Well, you s- stand yeah. out the door and stab it through the Good whole night, and it's the same again tonight. Oh, I know. Aye. You know, um, so there you go. What life for uh, Dumbarton? I like his record, accordion. Oh, his accordion playing was magnificent. Aye. Yes, Willie from Dumbarton. Two reels. Aye. Aye, you get the big box in me, aye. Aye, the big box, absolutely. Aye. So I might give you a tune myself if you're a good man. Aye, I'll be good Scotty, please. Okay, dinky-doo to you. Dan from Paisley. Aye, Dan. Dinky-doo, Scotty. Dinky-doo, Dan. How are we doing? Oh, not too bad. I'm not too happy with you tonight. Why, what's up? I'm a mature student. A mature student? Are you a lazy layabout? Definitely not. I'm you, at 9 sponge, o'clock in the morning, every spon- morning. Do you sponge off the state? No, I worked all my life and decided to go back to college. Are you high on drinking drugs? No. Nope. Have you got soaring debt? No. Nope. There you go. I'm a student who's got student loans, right enough. Right. Now, I don't think we should be lending students any money because they can't handle it. I think it's as good as kissing it ta-ta. What, the pittance they give you? 
How do you mean the pittance? You get a student loan. We never used to get anything. The banks wouldn't touch us. You're pumped, Scott. You got a grant for the government. Oh, we got a grant. Yeah, but the uh -huh. banks wouldn't touch you. Yes. Yeah, but the loan's the same sort of thing. It's so supposed to replace the grant, and it's pittance. No, it's not replacing the grant if you have to pay it back, is it? Ah, you have to pay it back, exactly. Do you not think it's high time we went back to the grant system? Well, do you think that actually they should just write off the student loans? Definitely. I mean, I've worked all my life. I'm... Uh, I'm in my thirties. Right. Now, listen, what prompted you to go and uh, uh, do a course then? I, I changed a career. Had you, got, uh, had you got a university degree before? No. Right. So what, what, what was the change of career? What actually was the stem? Did you make your own decision? Do you think, I'm going to get myself a higher education? Aye, I was sick of being in dead-end jobs. Right. So you went for it? I went for it, and I, I don't regret it, but I'm worse off than I was when I was working. You probably will be. What stage are you at? Well, I'm going into first year of university in September after doing a college course for a year. Right. And what degree are you going to do? Business law. Lovely. I like it. Yes, I... So, I mean, I simply can't call... I mean, you simply can't say that students are sponges. I mean, the people that I'm in class with, there are half a dozen of your mature students who have given up jobs. Right. And do you think you'll end up having to take another job just to fund your course? Oh, definitely, are. Right, and but will that fit in? Are you still going to do your business law? It'll be a struggle. I mean, I've got friends who have worked through their final year of their degree course just now, and they're up to their eyes in debt. Right, listen to me. This is just for you, right? Never mind the rest of them, because there are a lot of layabouts in the student population. Let me give you this one, then. Here's, here's, here's a wee bit of advice for what it's worth, right? Uh-huh. See when you go for a job... See when you look for something to fund your course. Uh-huh. Aim a little bit higher than you might be tempted to, because you might think, oh, that'll do just now. That'll, that'll ease the financial burden, right? Uh-huh. Aim a bit higher. Go for something that requires... Um, an, an, an element of business law and say that you are doing your degree as we speak, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in other words, um, you know, something to do with uh, maybe the layer below company directors. Right. Right. And actually aim for that. Go and pitch them and do that because a lot of people don't. They think, oh, I better know. Right? Ring these companies up because they're desperate for people working at your level. But you see, the thing is, I'm competing against 18 and 19 year olds. Never mind that, right? They don't matter. You're the person that matters. This is the moment, and I am the one, is what you've got to say, right? Never, you see, you've just given me a negative there. I bet you see. I bet you see, doesn't he pay your bills? No, this is true. It does the pay. I mean, you're calling all, you're turning all students with the same brush. Well, you're yes. Saying. Well, yes, I am indeed. You know, but I mean, I accept that you're obviously an exception. But what I'm saying to you is when it comes to funding it, don't take a job stacking shelves or sweeping floors, right? Like oh, no, I would never have to lower myself to that. I mean, well, there are some not, kids... it's not that... even a question of lowering yourself. I mean, a job's a job. I've done all sorts of jobs washing up in places and everything, right? But and then all I'm saying to you is to go as high as you can so that maybe try and find a company that might even help to fund the degree course. That's an idea. I never thought of that one. There you go, see? I mean, do you not think that this student loan nonsense and this graduate endowment that you've now got to pay as well on top of your student loan is a load of nonsense? Well, it's interesting. I mean, that's what we're going to be discussing over the course of evening, so stick with us. But let me know at some point how you get on. I certainly will, Scotty. And, and t trust me, follow that one up, OK? I will do. And all the very best with it, Dan. And to you. Cheers to now, bud. All the best. Right. Ta-da now. Right, to the telephones, folks, as quickly as you possibly can. We're exceptionally busy. Keep your calls coming. Andrew on Animal Cruelty. Hi, Scotty. How are you, darling? Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo. How Dinky are you? I'm um, not bad for my age. Well, I see that. I see that selfie. I thought he was hell of a civil. <laughs> Wasn't he? No, he was what? He was hell of a civil. Oh, he was awfully nice. Yes. Yeah, yes. I was a bit of broth on Sunday. There's nothing wrong with a bit of civility, is there? Yeah, I, I was a broth on Sunday. And it was lovely. You're in a broth, man. No, no, I'm Paisley, buddy. Right, uh, yeah, well, I know that, but I mean, I, I just I, wondered if you're, so if you're an, I, when I say you're in a broth, I don't mean are you from a broth? Are you a man that likes a broth? Yeah, I was here on Sunday for a dog show. Right. And it was did, did you win? Well, I, I get reserved best in show. 
Right, excellent. And did you, right. have, did you have a dog with you? Oh, of course I did. I had a wee ass and pincher with me. <laughs> with your cheeky old son. <laughs> I want to talk about animal cruelty, though. Right, go on, sir. I actually studied animal health and welfare at Aberdeen University. Good man. And, and I think people who see animals like this should be shot at dawn. Well, yes. I mean, obviously the shooting is extreme, but I mean, you know, I, I think we should be looking at this. This guy could find 690 quid, right? Uh -huh. And the dog is in a dreadful, dreadful it's condition. A terrible state. I saw the news. Did you see? You, the suffering must have been terrible, oh, you know. It so, was absolutely horrendous. So, I mean, I think that we've got to look at jail sentences. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't, I don't know about life in prison, but it should definitely... Uh, definitely yeah, but I'll tell you, can you imagine, because even in with the old lags and the nick there, actually, they'll not take kindly to somebody that's been mistreating a dog. That's right. I mean, it was a red dog was absolutely emaciated. It was a horrendous state. Yes, yes. Then shocking, was... shocking. So that's and what I think. And also, Scott, see Danny was just off the phone there. Yes. I, I think it was about cheeky way he said they wouldn't lower himself doing it like brushing phone. Yes, I didn't like that. I, I didn't, didn't like I, that. I, I didn't like that. I'll be honest with you. That's why I pulled him up. I says, well, it's not a question of lowering yourself because, I mean, yeah, we, you, right, you and right. I have done all sorts of things, of you know. Of course we have. Doing the lavies and washing and up. Some, and, and there's some smashing cleaners about this. I mean, that's... Oh, that's, quality stuff. I would never... Listen, here, in a lot of businesses, the cleaners are more important than the, the board of directors. That's very, very true. Do you know what I mean? If the place uh -huh. is clean and all the rest of and it, And the know? hospitals, the hospitals, the cleaners are mandatory part of the, the Absolutely vital. And here, did you see, and paper in the lavies and all that That's sort right. of stuff. It's uh -huh. vital. Oh, no, no. I uh, I rate the cleaners extremely highly. Yeah, and I was very glad that you pulled them up about it. I did indeed, sir. And listen, you take care of yourself. You take care, Scotty. All right, we'll chat later, Andrew. Thank you, do. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye now. Right, to the telephones, folks. We are exceptionally busy. You won't get through at the moment. As soon as there's a line free, I promise I will let you know. If you're on the line and ringing, stay exactly there. Do not hang up your phone because I'm going into the commercial break because if you're not there you might never get back on at all it's only a few pennies it's a local call 0141429 if you've just joined us welcome to the show you're late we start at 10 o'clock sharp you're listening to scotty mcclue this is the country stop phone-in program on the country stop radio station q96 talk radio for scotland and for the world if anyone ever asks you what radio station do you listen to you always say q96 tell everyone about the program tell to tell, to tell, to tell, to tell, to tell, ten about Scotty McClue and the megaphone in on 96.3 FM. Right, uh, back I go to the telephones. We're talking to the decision maker. Good evening, decision maker. Hello, Scotty. How are you? Uh, very well, sir. Nice to hear you. Here I am, Tradeston's finest son, according to your wizard and switchboard. Tradeston's finest son. That's what we Indeed. want. Now then, Indeed. decision maker, what can, I, what can I be up to with you? Well, I was telling you about your students um, yes. and the debate. Are you, are you a student yourself? I'm not. I was right. at one point, and I'll be yeah. quite honest with you. I did a... I won't use the word something be, uh, beginning with S and ending with T for brains degree, which has been of no use to me, so I bitterly regret it. However, my personal point of view well, on this... Can I, can I just stop you there? Could you not please bitterly regret anything? Well, I think this is my life is full of bitter regret. And, and I, don't, I, I don't know if you have the word hate in your vocabulary, but no. I would like you to remove it if you have. I, I, I generally so don't have that are. word in my vocabulary. So However, you have a fine bit of life experience, is what indeed. You're well, that's right. that's the way that's the way to look at it. Right. However, however, my personal point of view is that I think, as far as students are concerned, and as far as education is concerned, I think we get bogged down far too much in debates about. What students, you know, what students are studying and that type of thing. Um, my personal point of view. What on do it you is mean, this, whether it's law or psychology or yeah, physics? Exactly. Or, right. Exactly. My personal point of view on this. It's not so much what they're studying; it's the fact they're students. My personal point of view on this is that the, in terms of the way this country is run, we need certain services to be provided. Now, I'll give you a prime example, right? One of which is plumbing. You try and get a plumber out to you know, obviously do plumbing or whatever else happens to be, or an electrician. These are skills that are needed, right? Correct. Now, playing devil's advocate here, Scotty, I don't think media studies is needed. Media, yeah, there's a lot of growth in media, we, all kinds of media and radio and all that kind of thing, but it's not ne as necessary as plumbing. So well, well I, let, me just, let me just stop you for a second, though. I just want to add a dimension to this uh, uh, decision-maker. Uh -huh. Um... You say media studies uh, uh, are not particularly valuable, but in actual fact, 
um, any form of study of our way of life. Now, media studies is not uh, necessarily just presenting on the radio or the television or whatever. It's no. the whole sort of political makeup, the whole kind of public relations side of things, the whole way that we present ourselves, the whole That's way that we, that we market and uh -huh. sell. Now, in actual fact, Everything in Britain, particularly in a capitalist society, even although we've uh -huh. got a left-wing socialist government in at the moment, Indeed. Uh, in a capitalist society, everything is actually marketing and sales. Indeed it's it is, So I would say that sometimes I think we might get jaded with certain courses in things like media studies because perhaps they're not taught in the most progressive or helpful way for the individual. No. Uh -huh. Does that but make sense? Other, yes, yeah, that's true, Scotty. But on the other hand, what I would suggest is that the people who are going into these courses are fancying themselves as the next... Oh, I'll not name certain presenters. Let's just say the next Joe Kilday on Breakfast on Q96 without naming other presenters or whatever else it has. Or, or, or the next indeed, Scotty McClure. Or the next Scotty McClure, exactly. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. But that's not a realistic ambition. However, what I think needs to happen is that this country, in terms of... And this, is, this actually is a very socialist way of looking at it. I think what we need to do is be quite regulated about what we expect from people. So, for example, just to give you an example, if this country needs a lot of something, uh, to give you a very simple example, it needs a lot of plumbers because it's very difficult to get plumbers these days. If this country needs a lot of plumbers or needs people to dig up roads because the left-wing socialist government, as you put it, are digging up roads and wanting to build roads or railways, which is fine. If we need that service, then we should be giving preferential treatment to people who want to study that thing. Right. And what I mean is preferential treatment in terms of if I, as a 32-year-old who's not studied that before, want to go down that road, I should be entitled to that education for free. Right, decision maker. Here, I'm going to put a proposition to you. Uh -huh. um, you go along to your career's advisor, yeah. and uh, he or she says, um, what would you like to do? And you say, I would like to study media. And they say, right, well, we're not needing any more media students at the yeah. moment. What we are needing is plumbing students. Yes, that's so exactly that's, what should be happening. So that's what you're doing. In other that's words, exactly you what say, be oh, right. And they say, because if you do that, we will guarantee you a job. Yes. And not only that, I think that people, if somebody wants, if, of, of any age and any walk of life, wants to study something that is of use to the country in terms of where we are at just now and what we actually need, then yes, that's exactly what I think should happen. So we're so back to, to what study, we discussed the other night, not ask what you can do for your country, but what can, what, not what your country can do for do you, for but you, what but can what you, you can do, do for your, your country. country. Yes. Yes. So if, if you want to study something which is a, a skill that is in demand at the moment, whether it be plumbing, whether it be road building, whether it be goodness or whatever else, let, let's say IT skills, then I think that should get a lot of preference over media studies. And I would go so far as to say that, that, should, that we, we should be making it easier and more financially acceptable, acceptable for people to go and study these things. And yes... The people who go into that thing, you know, you can always say, well, you know, if you get the if you get the degree or you get the job, you should be able to pay back your loan. But no, I would go further than that. I think what we should be doing is making it easier. In, in, other, in other words, to say, if you want to go and study something, if you genuinely and we feel you've got genuinely got a skill that you can learn, then you should be able to go and do that and be able to do it for free at the taxpayer's expense. Decision making. It looks like we've made a decision here. Well, that's much. What I'm trying to do. I'm just Lo supporting the idea. Lovely talking. Like, lovely talking just, to you. I just don't like this idea that people can go and be whatever they want to be, and then end up in loads of debt or whatever. I think the, the, the powers that be, if they need a skill needing filled, which we do with manual labour or any other kind of labour, whether it happens to be I don't, whatever it happens to be at the time, Scotty, whether it's social work or whatever, I think if the government needs that skill filled, then it should be provided, and we should, we should all have the opportunity to do that. A matter, of, a, get, mat a matter of supply and demand. Exactly, and it should get preference over whatever other people fancying studying, whether it be history or media, study or me media studies or these other things. Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo indeed. Dinky-doo to you, sir. Right, uh, very good point there from the decision-maker from Tradeston. 0141429 if you've got a comment on that one, please. To the telephones as quickly as you possibly can. We've got uh, Andy, who's in Ibrox. Hello, Andy. All right, Scotty. Dinky-doo, mate. Dinky-doo. What can I do for you? I've just made a decision, Scotty. I don't want to be a plumber.
You don't want to be a no. plumber. I got the chance of being a plumber when I was younger, and, uh, you know, I should have taken it, shouldn't I? No, this is going to be on the radio if you're a plumber. Absolutely. <laughs> I was phoning out about John Prescott. Yes. I think you should, you should have chalked it about weeks ago. Now, I don't think that, you see, for instance, he, he was flying the flag for the guys, wasn't he? He was having a, a, ah, a bit he... of a flutter here. And the other thing is, does that mean he's lost any of his political skills? Of course, sir. If you can lie and cheat in your wife, what you go to your constituents, you know, and other people, the nation. It doesn't necessarily follow, I don't think. I mean, I think if you're driven by extramarital sex, then th that, 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 that's true. That is true. That is actually a fair point. Right, so uh, who have we got here? Hamish in the drum? Oh, Scotty, how are you doing? Now, I hope I'm not going to get any of your nonsense. No, right? no, no. I'm going straight. <laughs> you, just always, you always like to go just one that wee bit further, don't uh, you? Well, not tonight, Scotty, but it's about the students. <laughs> yes. I just say, uh, uh, the, the live and sponging, the sponging, Sponging off the street, yes. the filth that are unclean. Yes, and, uh, I've had, I've had my way, and I'll choose my words, Scotty, so I'll not get caught. Words, I'll choose my words, I'd bri bring all this, uh, the fire engines for, uh, for, for Glasgow and uh, the rest of Scotland and the UK, I'd bring them to the quarters, I'd have uh, uh, filled up the water with ice in it, and I'd hose them down in the quarters. Then I would give them all a bar of carbolic soap. Right. Give them a good, a good fresh and a good wash. A good wash, as we say in the West Coast. Now, about this left-wing socialist government. Yes. I'm not only going to say this. There's no way, uh, this, when the voting comes up, that they'll get my vote. Now or any other day. Whatever our party gets it, they'll get it. And what I think uh, my vote is uh, suited for, but certainly not this left-wing government. Do you know what? Do you know what I think uh, politicians should have to do? They should have to put forward, uh, you know their own personal manifesto of what they can bring to the party. That's right. If you'll pardon the pun. Yes. You know, they, so they, if they say, I want you to vote me, and say, say uh, I say, my name is Scotty McClure, I want you to vote me in Scotty. for the Paisley Media seat because I will bring a thousand jobs to the county. Scotty, I've been listening to you for two months, and I think, uh, I think if you stood as a candidate, I'd definitely vote for you. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Do you think, do you think I'd be in with a I, chance? I'm telling you, you would be. Do you not think they'd start oh, on God me the, right. the second I went through to the Parliament? They'd start on me. That's right. Let them start me. You're <laughs> able to start them out. A lot of them. The majority are left-wingers in there anyway. Anyway, I'm going to say good night. God Here bless you. Good night and God bless you. are a top man. Right, to the telephones. Keep your calls coming, folks. 0141 429 0963. We are exceptionally busy tonight talking to John in Glasgow. Hello, John. How are you doing, Scotty? Very well, sir, yes. What can I do for you? Scotty, when you, when you were uh, getting brought up, were you brought up rich or were you brought up poor? Was I brought up rich or was I brought up poor? Now, that's a very interesting question, right? Because I can't answer that in the way that you've asked it because I, don't, va I don't put value just on money. Materially, uh, I'm speaking materialistically. Were you brought up materialistically rich? I was, I was youngest of five. Uh, was, well, put, put, it, put it this way. We never had any central heating. Mm -hmm. uh, we never had uh, uh, any excess of things. We never had anything that we didn't actually need. You had what you need, not what you wanted. Aye, not what you wanted. Well, you got, you got told, I mean, you, you, you was actually explained to you why. I mean, my father was a craftsman, and my father was would say things like, when I saw a toy as a kid, uh, I would say, I'd, I'd, I'd quite like that. You didn't say I want, because I want didn't get. But if you said that you'd, you'd quite liked it, and, and could, could you have it because you had some money in your money box and all this stuff, he would say, no, it's not very good. I'll make you one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and sometimes he did. <laughs> well, 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 my, my father wasn't a craftsman. I didn't have that luxury. And, and, but... But you see, in terms of when you say were well, you brought up poor or rich, in terms of uh, of of uh, you know quality of of parenting and oh. things like that, and all the love that came from them, uh, I would say very rich. <laughs> I would say, well, I would say I was a millionaire too. But you know? the point I'm trying to make is, you're successful now. Right. You, but it's very uh, kind of you to say so. Uh, 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 <laughs> you're successful now, and the reason for your success is because you had a hunger, a desire to succeed, to be good at what you're good at. Yes. Right. 
Now, you see the kids going to university. I put myself for university. I yes. paid my own course fees. I paid, I paid my examination fees. I never claimed the state because I worked before I back as a mature student. You know how much I had to save? Saved the dosh and paid it. Got the degree and was quite happy doing that. Yes. Now, the students today, uh, there's some kids who come from fairly privileged families. There's, there's, there's not, um, there's not, uh, the, the, the poor family is not the majority anymore. We're, we're all sort of a middle of the road families. Well, the real, can, can I interrupt you there for a second? Let's just compare it with, I don't know if Glasgow University still has it, but there was a holiday at one point called Meal Monday Holiday. Uh-huh. Right? Now, the, the, the meal Monday was when the student went back to their house for uh-huh. another pouch full of oatmeal for the porridge. Yes. And that was meal Monday. And that's the way Scotland worked in, in, in those days. We're talking in the days of buns on, you know, oh, the 1700s, uh, cool. 1800s, through into the 1900s. And let's be honest about it. You know, until probably about... 40, 50 years ago, there was real poverty still in Glasgow. Yes. So that's the truth of it. You know, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm putting, we're washing in the green here. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, the point I'm trying to get to is... is, is uh, Hello? Are you there? Hello, are you there? We seem to have lost your line on the phone, right? But quite genuine, if you want to ring back, we'll catch up with you. To the telephones, folks, 0141 429 0963. We're talking to Fee, who's in Johnson. Are you there, Fee? Yes, I'm here, Fee. Dinky do, Angel. Dinky do, darling. Now then. How's Lord Wraith? Oh, absolutely beautiful. And I tell you one thing, I'm actually out walking the moment. Good. With my daughter's. A Dalmatian dog. Ah, a domino. A domino. A, d- a Dalmatian. Yes. Beautiful wee dog. Yes. Now, see this cruelty thing so in the So you just, you just need another hundred of them, don't you? Uh, no, just one enough, thank and you. And that would give you a hundred and one <laughs> Dalmatians. No, one enough. <laughs> thank you, Scotty. <laughs> but honestly, she is brilliant. But... The thing is, see this cruelty thing? Yes. This was, I, did, did you I, see the story? This oh, was, this, it was... Uh, he starved a greyhound. I tell you one thing, she'd look at the hold him. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. How on earth can anybody do that? I can, it's, something, it's something I can't understand. I can't understand it myself, Scotty. Because I'm out here walking my wee daughter's dog, because she's she's uh, works with Strathclyde Police. Right. Got to have to do sh- different shifts. Yep. Can mum take the dog? Of course, mum will take the dog. Oh, of course, no bother. It's nothing, and it's good for mm-hmm. you to get out and and get a wee bit of fresh air. The yeah, only thing is, Scotty, I always had dogs. Yes. It was the border collies I had. Lovely dogs. Lovely dogs, lovely what, can, a, can a one person dogs mind you? Yes. Do you know what I mean by enough, that? Yes. The one that feeds them, that's the one. That's the one. Darling, I'm going to have to dash and feed the nation. Cut off, Andy. Uh, I know, I should pay this bill. Uh, you hardly paid the bill, Sarah, I knew that. Well, I wanted to ask you to get wee... your money in in time. Uh, I wanted to ask you a wee fact or fiction question. Yes. Remember the first words Neil Armstrong said when he landed on the moon? When he landed in the moon? Yeah. Come on, then. You don't know that? I, well, oh, do you mean the real answer? Aye. It's not a joke. No, it's a, wee, it's a he, fact of fiction story. It's a wee story. Here about this well, 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 he said, this is one small step for man, but one giant step for mankind. Yeah, but before that, he said under his breath, good luck, Mr. Bats. Mr. Bats? Yeah, because seeing he's only eight year old, and he stayed in Connecticut, his neighbours were Mr. and Mrs. Bats. And Mr. Bats, he wanted one to buckle my shoe with his missus. Right. His missus says, me and he was get more chance of landing on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he said under his breath. Well, you know, I'm always going, there's more chance of me being the Bishop of Cork. I thought you were. It'd be very strange, <laughs> wouldn't it, if, if everybody says, we're coming to your enthronements. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Lovely to talk to you. Good yeah, stuff. Well. All the best. Tell you later. Dinky do, bud. Right, uh, that's excellent stuff. Now, um, I've got... Oh, gosh, we'll get everybody on here. Let's get Bob and Paisley... Bob, are you there? Hello, Scotty. Hello, Dinky-Doo. Dinky-Doo. 
I don't know if you've read in the paper today about this 16 year old that's got away on holiday for while he was yes, in bail. Yes, he was tagged. Ah, what's your opinion on that? Well, I just think this whole tagging thing, I mean, I've heard stories about people, you know, certainly um, uh, immigrant prisoners cutting tags off and disappearing and all the rest of it. I think we need to keep people in the nick, but we need to have grades of nick, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So you have, like, you, you know, like the old days you had high security and you still have high security for uh, prisoners that are regarded as very dangerous or a security risk, you know. Ah, but the thing is... But, but, but I think we need to go down, I think we need to have um, camps because I think people need to surrender their liberty if they're not willing to play the game. Ah, but the thing is, the court and the crown system, let him go on holiday, they haven't protested us. No, but the whole thing's getting very lax, and a lot of this is to do with the, with the political interference in it. Do you not think the Scottish justice system is becoming a farce, though? Well, yes. I mean, I think there are elements of farce within it, and I think we really need to, to very seriously look at, at toughening up in Scotland uh, so that people know the difference between right and wrong and know the consequences if they cross the line. I mean, it's quite laughable. I mean, this guy's allegedly committed murder. And he's allowed to go on holiday without surrendering his passport whilst on bail. But if you sit on a double yellow line and don't pay the parking ticket, that's they're, right. They're chapping your door and want to take you to prison. That's right. Mm, That's right, and that and that is that is your problem. You know what what we what we tend to do, we're ha- we're uh, soft on hard crime and hard on soft crime. Yeah, so, I mean, you're and, on the night. I know why it is because it's an easier way to get money out of people. You were on about the other night there about knife kicking. Is that not just going to give all these idiots that go about with knives the, the right, the wrong idea? They can go about stabbing somebody and they get away in holiday. Yeah, but you see, you see, there shouldn't be any stabbing at all. You know, because we should be living by the rules, judge ye as ye be not judged, and do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So in other words, if somebody stabbed somebody, would they be quite happy to get stabbed themselves? Oh, very much doubt it. I mean, they think they're the big hard man walking Yeah, out well, there's never a big hard man. They're the fifty fifty scaredy custard yellow bellies. Because if you're them. a hard man, you don't need to carry arms. But they'll just have to look at what happened uh, the past couple of days in this court thing and go, oh, well, that's what happens to you. Yeah, but, I mean, we really need to get the message across loud and clear you know that bad bring... behaviour will not be tolerated in Scotland. Do you know I think we should bring back the birch? Yes, I do think we should bring back the flaming birch, and it should be a pants-down job in the high street on a Saturday morning. And all the shoppers can see it being in Minnesota and said, oh, my God, I wouldn't like any lad of mine to get that. I mean, half it goes back to education as well, though, Scotty. I mean, you just have to look at the, some of the parents that are bringing people up nowadays. Yeah, but we also need to get we need to get the family unit back. We need to stop this single mother nonsense. That's got to be stopped right away. I've said it for years, and people used to hee hee and a hint they're honed at me. But you know, I mean, I was speaking the truth then, and I am speaking the truth now. Do you think it's mainly single mothers that are causing all these problems? Well, it's, it's certainly... Well, well, it's the whole thing of actually rocking the foundations of the family unit. That's the big problem. I mean, the, the, the church has actually been on today. Do you know that the number of single-parent families in Scotland is set to soar by a third over the next 20 years? So that's effectively clobbered what we know as the traditional family unit. The churches have condemned the government for not doing enough to promote marriage and have claimed that the ministers were feeling a divorce industry. So there you are. The claims follows growing concern that Labour's tax and benefits policies are doing nothing to promote marriage and instead encourage single parenthood. Well, and I agree, that's what's happening. There's a simple way to stop single mothers is to stop all their Don't benefits. pay them, don't pay them. I wouldn't give them a penny. I would say, listen, if you're not married and you've got kids, I'm sorry, but the state will not finance you. You're on your own, madam. Ah, you're quite right. I mean, that's that's the one way to stop them. Because and I'd also send the message out to all the men that if they're doing the one-two buck on my shoe, they keep their hat and coat on. Exactly that. I mean, Do you know what I mean? They keep the rain mate on the bobby's hat. There's far too much of this. I mean, they just they go out the Friday and Saturday night and they pick up whoever... 
And I thought the note, there's mistakes made and... Yeah, well, no mistakes should be made. The guys get the rain mate on the Bobby's hat and that is that. They and they, these single mothers got three council houses and, and all they the rest of the as well. Girl, they say to the girl, if they must pick up a casual girl, right, which I'm not particularly keen on the idea, but if they have to do that, because they've got a drink in them, they say to the girl, this is all about sex. It's nothing to do with breeding or long-term relationships. It's the one-two buck of my shoe end of. Are you all right with that, darling? Right. Rainmate goes over the hat, off we go. Exactly. And I mean, another way to stop them being single mothers is to stop them getting their free houses. Stop all that, for goodness sake. The houses are needed for married couples. They're needed for immigrants. They're needed for all these people. They're not needed for people who are just trying to fleece the state and bring up kids on the cheap. I mean, some of these single mothers are just like breeding machines. They don't know who the pair is. They one way. No, they haven't one. got a flame. It's a disgrace. And we need to blow full time on the whistle on that one. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's what I say, Bob. Right, uh, who else have we got here? We've got George in Knightswood. Hello, George. Hi, hello. You're talking about this justice stuff. Yes. Well, there's a problem with justice in this, this country now. It's knackered. There's no justice in Scotland. Well, we need to get the justice back. Well, you need to do something to rattle them, bam, put it on that, plus it costs them £430 million, isn't it? Right. Oh, that's a honeypot for them, that is. So there's you... sad, sick individuals over there. They know what's wrong with the justice system, but they're too feared to fix it. Well, we need to fix it, and we need to fix it starting tonight. That's the thing, George. Well, you'll know that. Ah, don't, don't ever say never. Never say never, I say. Right, we've got uh, Queenie again. Queenie, it's only once a night, but we've got a very special dispensation for you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Scotty. No, it was just uh, my auntie Esther phoned me from Clyde Bank. She says, I didn't believe that was you on the, 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 the phone tonight. Uh, she got but, a message. Uh, she, she must have heard it on the radio. She must have heard me on the radio. But Bless her. I was speaking to one of your... Uh, Colleagues in the, the the reception area. So I've got your address. And I'm going to send you down Good. a couple of. I'm going to send you down a couple of postcards from yep. Arbroath and uh, Montrose. That would be gorgeous, Queenie. Thank oh, you very no much. Problem. Because I'll tell you, if you've ever a message for anybody in Glasgow in the west of Scotland, they're all listening to Q96. Well, they'll all be listening after they hear Queenie on the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> <laughs> I actually get called the Duchess of Montrose. Oh my dear. Well, well done. We'll not, go, we'll not go into any further though. No, we certainly will not. <laughs> I, I think the real one might want a word with you. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> right, Scotty, I'll let you go. Thank you, do. All the best. 0141-429-0960. We're only joking, Your Grace, if you're listening. 0141-429-0960. You're listening to Scotty McClure. We're live on Q96. That's the big one. Also, if you're on the World Wide Web, you'll get us on Q96.net. If you want to find out about me, Scotty McClure, if you're an alien life form from another planet and you hadn't heard of me until tonight, then get on to scotty-mcclue.com scotty-mcclue.com and you'll get the guest book there, polite messages only of course, and there's a forum for discussion, there's some video, some audio and some footies for you. scotty-mcclue.com all right, you got that lot? Right, there we go now. So much to get on with tonight. I'm going back to the telephones as quickly as I possibly can. We're talking about the students. Our students are lazy lot of layabouts, sponging off the, the, the state. Are they smelly people just wasting everybody's time? Or are they actually a useful asset to this country? The students are complaining about unprecedented stress, right? Now, I would say that's probably drink and drug related. They're complaining about soaring debt. That is because they cannot handle money. They're complaining about pressures of time for their work. That's because they're keeping in all the time. So there you go. So uh, I don't think we should be lending students any money at all. We want to stop all that student loan stuff. And if they want to go to uni, then they either take um, you know, a course where the government can ensure them of a job plumbing, or whatever, um, or they pay for it themselves. So there you are. Education used to be seen as a right. Uh, it's obviously seen now by the government as something of uh, a luxury because they say, by all means, do it, but you, you'll have to borrow the money because we are not paying. So there you go. So it's, it's not seen as a right, which is strange under a left-wing socialist government for 10 years. 0141-429-0963, or for nine and a bit years, I say. Also, um... 
the animal cruelty, the guy that starved the greyhound uh, was fined 690 quid. I say there should be imprisonment uh, for that. There should be jail sentences for cruelty to animals. And John Prescott, uh, why should he have to give up his perks just because he's had a little flutter doesn't mean that he's lost any of his political acumen and political skills. These are rad. He had two or three subjects to get you started there tonight, 0141 429 0963. Also, um, I'm uh, absolutely touched on this last night, but we couldn't because we had such a big discussion on, uh, on uh, getting um, Class A drugs on prescription last night, which I think is a, is a wonderful thing. McClue has the solutions to so many things. Uh, you know, a lot of you, we couldn't actually get your calls on last night. We were just stowed, 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 stowed out the door and step it through for the two hours solid. But we did touch on this. Unmarried couples will have the right to make the same financial claims after a breakup as those who have gone through a marriage of civil partnership ceremony. Under proposals to be unveiled today, wait for it. They could include rights to claim maintenance, lump sums, share of property and pensions. Gay couples who have not gone through a civil partnership ceremony would enjoy the same rights as unmarried heterosexual couples. In other words, what they're doing is exactly uh, you know, what officialdom is doing is exactly what the church has accused the Labour government of doing they are undermining the family unit, they're causing the death of the family in this country, and I for one think it is absolutely appalling, and of course the worst thing is funding these single mothers who drop their knickers and then just swan around living off the state, and I go Tut, 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 tut. That's what Scotty McClue thinks of all that. 0141 429 0963. We're live on Q96. That's the big one. That's the country's top radio station. That's the one for you. Local radio for the west of Scotland and for the world. Uh, I'm back to the telephones. I'm talking to uh, Jenny, who's in Springburn. Hello, Jenny. Are you there, Jenny? Can you hear me, Jenny, right now? If you're not there, I will move straight on. Is Billy and Clyde Bank there? Scotty. Yes, well stayed on, Scotty. Billy. Well done. You've been on a good, you've gone a good queen. I've stayed on for about a year. You've been on for a year, Sal, and, and bless you. <laughs> bless you. Much yes. appreciated. I know it's been a long way, but oh, you're, you're well, an example. You're an example. A good wait. Now then, Billy. Uh, no, was just... Uh, just uh, before I uh, ask you a couple of questions, Scott, I was just wondering uh, where you've been. Where I've been? Aye. In what respect? Do you mean uh, the day? <laughs> <laughs> the mean tonight? This morning. There's oh, least you know asking who I've been where. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McClure. Thank God, aye. That's it, Mrs. <laughs> McClure. Well, that's uh, it. Uh, no, I used to listen to you um, a bit three or four years ago, Scotty. Right, that's right. On, on Q96? Yes. Yes. Oh, the best one. The best, the big one. Oh, uh, the best one. The yeah. best one, yep, yep. This is radio for the west of Scotland for the 21st this is, century. Uh, this is the best radio. Uh, this actually, uh, Scott, uh, we, how many people do you think are listening right now? We are the local radio station for Clyde Bank, Billy. I, I, I think I think you've asked me how many people are listening right now. Realistically, well, no, roughly, you know, roughly, 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 there could probably be about one and a half million people listening. Realistically, oh, right? Big time. Uh, roughly, there's yourself and me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> roughly, roughly, there's the two of us. No, 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 no. This is a, this is a <laughs> massive radio. This radio station goes right away over to Central Scotland. Go I've got you in a video. Have you? Right. Cool, I'll tell you that that'll be worth a fortune. That'll be worth a few quid. That'll be worth a few quid. That, that's yeah. ten years ago. But I was going to sell my rug when I said no. We'll just sell that video. That's right. That's that's <laughs> ten, that's ten years ago. We'll need to bring out another one. But well, I don't ask, Mike. But it's an axe monster I had. The, ne the next one will be a DVD. <laughs> so there you go. No, no, no. The next one's a, it's a mini disc. No, the mini disc. I don't think the mini disc's caught on as fast as it should have done because I showed that to one of the technical boys here and he goes, What's that? <laughs> 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 it's, it's good stuff, yes. And then there's the podcastings coming in. Yeah, yeah the podcasting is going out. No, podcastings. That's coming in. Oh, pod? I pod. That's too 
TV as for in, me. As in, as in PC Pod. No, it's TV for me. It's TV for you. What are you looking at? <laughs> big, I'm looking at the big picture. The big, you're looking at the big picture. That's what we need. We need to get into Hollywood. Scotty <laughs> McClure goes to Hollywood. No. Along with Frankie. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, Frank, no, Frankie was in Bollywood. No, who was Herbie? What was Herbie in? Herbie rides again. No, he, no Herbie's a boxer. No, no, Herbie's a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of Babe. Babe's a pig. I'll bring a few of them. Absolutely. <laughs> you see, do you know, you know, I love when Halloween comes along because it's the one night of the year my missus doesn't have to dress up. <laughs> it's my night of the year, like to take my mask off. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you go to when you go to a pub or in Clyde Bank, all the broomsticks are outside. <laughs> All the bankies are in there giving it that. That's me off now, just to back to Oz. <laughs> that's me just going to follow the yellow brick road. But you go, on a Saturday you're... night, you think that's what it is? But see if you're booking for an apple, <laughs> so you need to get into the toilets. For a what, la? But see if you're booking for an apple, oh. you need to get into the toilets. Oh, I wouldn't need to for anything in there, I'll tell you. <laughs> One of the worst toilets in Britain. You have to duck for your Dolan Clyde Bank. <laughs> is that where you actually is actually that where the photo I'm gonna boot with web feet? They took a couple of bankies last week and they actually ringed them and hope they come back next season. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't have a rubber duck in your bath, you have a wee banky. <laughs> you'll you'll have to go now. <laughs> right to the telephones. Oh one four one four two nine O nine sixty. You're listening to Scotty McClure. We're live on Q ninety six. Back and go to the telephones. Andrew in Black Hill. Hello, Scotty. Well, well stayed on, Andrew. Hello, Scotty. Top man. Um, can I first say um, it's about Karen Marx. They said workers of all lands unite. Workers of all lands unite. Of all lands. All lands, yes, unite. Oh, so you said can I, can I'm I a member tell of the Labour Party myself. You said they're all left wing socialists. Left I don't know how many of them are. Is that right? Yes, I think uh, I think uh, actually some of the Tories in disguise. They should actually read more about John McLean and then they become left wing well, socialists. Well, John, uh, but John McLean was a commie, wasn't he? Yes, he was a kind of no. He was a Scottish Republican socialist. Now wait, wait a minute. I'll just make a Scottish Republican socialist. No, socialist I think, yes. Uh, is that right? You're yes, working yes. me through the back, you know. Yes, it was. But I want to send you one of my G8 T-shirts. Well, I tell you this. Can I tell you a funny before you do? So yes. Let me tell you a funny. There was two MSPs in a sauna, right? Uh huh. And one says, "Have you read Marx?" And he says. I, I think it's the bench that's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's very like funny. Very good. That's not bad. I is want it? to send you one of my G8 t-shirts. My G8 t-shirts. I'll tell you some of the names that's on it. No, G8. don't don't be doing that. I'm not sure we can. Okay, you don't want one of my t-shirts. Okay. No, it's not. I don't um, want one of your think, t-shirts. Well, we'll get on to the students. I don't think they should be paid either. I think I... They should. My son's 17. He's standing beside me. He's doing his hires. He's very clever. And he's going to go to university. But no, but he has to work his way through university. You see if some of these lawyers know that, you know, like you're saying, they, they, the lawyers are making fortunes. They're making fortunes protecting criminals and all that. Well, I mean, I think, are you not talking about your legitimate defence lawyer? No, well, legitimate defence lawyers are making fortunes, man. You know, but do you not think that, you, you know, I mean, if somebody's up for something, they may not have done it, and they do need an element of protection. Well, I've, I've been in trouble a couple of times in my I mean, life. Have you, have, you, have, you, have you never heard of innocent till proved guilty? No, you're guilty till proven innocent. No, you no, you're not. In the first you, place. You're not, you see that? Yeah, I know that, but realistically, you wouldn't be there in the first place. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, what, the bad police there, what, then. No, what if you got lifted one night, right? right? Taken into the neck and all the rest of oh, it. Oh, what's happened? And then charged, and you said, hold on a minute, you've got the wrong that. man. You've got the wrong, wrong man here. I, I wasn't I anywhere near it. Yeah, well, there you go, you see. Mm-hmm. No, but back to the, so, uh, the students, I don't think they should be paid. Why not? Because I've met a lot of students and I hope to become a student myself and I'd like to work my way through it because it's the right way to do it because at the end of the day when you get the job, which you, the profession which you train in or educated in, you, you, you appreciate it more instead of just flying through it and getting drunk and steaming and on drugs all the way through it. 
Get what, up a wreck. what about, absolutely, now listen, what about if companies offered incentives, in yeah. other words, if they paid the fees, because it does That's actually, it should be. It, That's it, exactly it, what I was it does actually happen, but if they wanted them, if they said, look. There should be legislation, but if, should, this, if you get a profession, there should either be a job at the end of it or a job in during exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, but the job during, you during it. You hours a week on top of your 20, you yes. 21 hours a week, students yes. go instead hard 21 hours a week. That would only make it thirty one hours a week. What, would you, what, would, you, what would you like to listen? I mean, I mean, you you know, you your father was maybe the same. My father worked hours and hours and hours. Yeah, and hours. I came he, my he, father worked as well. He worked about seventy hours a week, I think. No. Listen, well, a lot of people did that about seventy hours a week and get nothing nice. No, they didn't get, they didn't very, get they, nice things in return. They didn't get very much back. Bad health. But listen, they got bad health back. That's right. Listen, tell me this, Andrew. What would you like to do if you had your choice? What What would you like to be a student of? What do I like to be a student of? I'd like to go and do um, sociology, do economics, or something like that. Law. Law. No, I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to. Economics. Is that enough lawyers? I watched the Devil's Advocate, and that put me off lawyers for a start. I'm economics. Economics, yes, because I'd like to get into politics and do it for nothing. Well, why? Because I think if you get into politics, your first two years should come dedicated from your heart, and you don't get a salary. Then we'll see how many people put their next floor for politicians. How would you survive? What would you do for yeah, survival? Well, that's the you don't survive. You survive really the same way the same way other people survive now. You would find a way of surviving. You'd have a second job instead of having two houses. Well, get a bar, a, a bar job in the evening if they get what I'm talking about. Instead, of, yes. Why the politician is not have a job. They make it stressful for themselves for their bags of closets or the so, closets of bags, whatever you like, like to call it. So you, you say come politics, you come in with your open bag. Right. These things hidden. See, oh, this is what I've got hidden. Then they've got like, the press like I've got their hands, and you like um, well, no man. We won't mention his name either. The big top guy for we, we mustn't. We mustn't mention any names. In fact, we can't even discuss that at the moment, Andrew. Right, 0141-429-0960. 0141-429-0960. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live in Q96. Remember, if you are coming on, be very careful. We don't want second names, names of individuals. We don't want uh, politics, football, all these sort of things. Everything else goes, no problem at all. Uh, John, who's in Yorker? Hello, John. John in Yoker, are you there? Can you hear me, John? Now, if you're not there, then I will have to move on. I uh, I make no apology for that. We are far too busy to be mucking about. Andy and Ibrox. All right, Scotty. How are you doing? I've got a wee confession to make. My sister walks from reception. That's how I get through all the time. Right, box. And so there we are. Ta-ta, I see. Right, Bill. Is that Bill and Clyde Bank? Good evening, Scotty. You know I'm a regular. Yeah, of course you're not. I'm very pleased to hear it. The doctor said you were getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe the doctor, Scotty. You know, I'm a regular. Oh, well, I'm very pleased. You maybe don't have to dash off during the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good Scotty, man. you know, right. I was on you last night. You were indeed. The, the listen, we'll let, we'll let you off for the warning. Right. God. Nice to see you. Right, my daughter came in today, right? Nothing wrong with that. And I was lying in the bed reading the paper. I feel I usually am, right? As you do, because somebody's taking the seats away. That's right. I, <laughs> I prefer lying. The f anyway, saying that, Scott, a serious, this is serious. They've, right? cho they've chalk marked the seats, Bill. <laughs> they've sold the seats, Scotty. <laughs> Go on, serious stuff. Right, okay. Now, I'm a really raging. I really am. I come on to your program quite often, Scotty. Do I see it now of order? Do, am I making a clown of myself? On here? Yeah. Certainly not, no. Well, I mean, my well, daughter was... I mean, am I making a clown of myself? Scotty, you're an art teacher. You know, I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, no, I, I don't think anybody really makes a client. The, the odd person makes a buffoon of themselves. Yeah, I've heard you call it people idiots, you Well, they are idiots. I mean, that's because, uh, the, you know, they're either extremely thick or extremely stupid. Um, you know, well, and, the same thing. You know, and I, no, not necessarily, you know, and I can yeah. see their point of view, but they can't see mine in a million years, so they're wasting the nation's time by that's taking right, up well. valuable air time. Of course. We've only Scotty. got two hours, Bill. Listen, Alice, I spoke to you last night, but tonight it's more serious. My daughter came in this evening, this afternoon, and said to me, Dad, she says, I was up at the school collecting the boys, right? And there's this bald day buffoon at the school who's a taxi driver, and if he's listening, he'll know who I'm talking about, right? Right. He's got an IQ of zero. Right, wait a minute, hold on. A bald buffoon 
who drives a taxi with an IQ of zero. That sounds dangerous. Well, it is dangerous, Scotty. For the simple reason is, he says to my daughter in front of other mothers in company at school, Oh, your dad's on Scotty McClure's uh, phone in every night. Bill is telling Scotty things, this, that, and the next thing. Well, nobody should ever should ever do that to anybody, you know? I mean, no, but that shows you how much a clown he is. Yes. You know, should, and I should, will take this up with this clown. He should have the decency to keep his, his gob shut. He wouldn't know how to keep his gob shut. He's never had a life. He's I mean, got... I thought taxi drivers were very discreet. Well, normally you, you would expect that, Scotty, but this guy... My daughter. I mean, in my in my days when I was courting, you know, in, in the back of the taxi, yeah. well, they were very discreet. <laughs> I used to say, there's an, a I said, there's an extra fiver if you take your time. They said, oh, we do that for free. <laughs> I says, take the long way around. He says, I was going to you anyway. He says, I didn't know there was a quick way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty, listen, is that, is that I, mean, I love your banter, I really do, but this clown is saying to my daughter today, embarrassed, your dad's on Scotty McClue, right? And she confronted me with this, and he is condemning me. The things your your dad's talking to Scotty McClue about are out of order. Except well, nobody except. listening to you, apart from your close family and friends, would would, would would have a clue who you are, and that is not the purpose of the programme. We're very, we're, we're, we're that, very discreet. Anything you tell me on here is between you and me, if you know what I mean. And the nation. And the nation, of course. But the I nation, the nation, but the nation are not going to let on. Scotty, I think I thought relevant, right? You do. But then, my daughter came in saying this. To, I was totally embarrassed because I'm trying to backpedal here and say, wait a minute, what's she talking about? No. The guy's never had a life, right? He's never had a life, never will have a life. His IQ is zero. Right. But he's in front of company at that school, mouthing off to my daughter. My daughter said I was totally embarrassed. Yes. And, um, you know, other parents are listening to this and they know me and obviously they're going to draw a conclusion. Well, listen... This guy is a loose... Cannon. No, you've never made a fool of yourself on the radio at all, and I can tell you because you're talking to a man who recognises a fool the second he hears one. Yeah. So there you are. Scotty, the thing is this, I hope he's listening tonight. Because I hope he's he my is. daughter, he's been on the radio a few times. He's yes. He's totally out of order. He's what we would call in Paris Monsieur Le Bam Bam. Yes, Scotty, if I could talk Spanish, I'd also reply to that. Thank goodness you can't. <laughs> right, I'm going to say dinky do, and you take care of yourself and we will catch up soon. Right, now, uh, Will, who's in Glasgow? Hello? Are you there, Will? Can you hear me? Right, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to muck about till you get to your telephones. Ian? Hi, I'm Will Scott. How are you doing, sir? Dinky do. Dinky do, you too. They go away to the lavvy and they go to make a cup of tea and they, they, oh, they, they you know, they hang up and wasting. all sorts of daft thing, just wasting everybody's time, you know? Exactly. Scotty. They're holding up a line, you see. That's the problem. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's a valuable Scotty, the line. students. Go on, sir. Give them a break, for God's sake. Do you think? Listen, I'll tell you what's happened in her life. My partner, who's... She's younger than me. She's... she just been... Age. Well, last year she finished her degree at Hull University. I know it well, yes. Yeah. Now, we get no help for her education. We get no handouts. We get... She took no bank loans. What we done was... I worked hard. She worked part-time in a bar just to fund what she wants to do in her life. Now, she's n we've, now come, we've now come to Glasgow five months before she's due to start her MLIT and top ten in the country. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but don't go into all these details. No, 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 no. Go on, go well, on. You, well, you know, um, I mean, I've not met any students. I, I, I mean, I left school in, I left school in 1980. I didn't get an opportunity to, to go to university. I just got an opportunity to get right out to work. Now, I met my partner about six, seven years ago. Would you like to go to university? Oh, I've had, I've had the opportunity, yeah. Well, the opportunity is there. It's in your hands, actually. Yeah, I know, but it's what I'm saying to you. Fin I'm financially, to financially and how it fits in, you mean? Exactly. Chronologically and all yeah. that, yes. But... but I mean, we've we've had no we've had no we've taken no loans. Okay, she's 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 getting help. She's getting a scholarship to do her MLA and 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 then her PhD. Education's uh, literature and that's her business. 
That's what she wants that's to be. That's her mas master of literature, or master of letters, is it? That's it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but she's she's no. I mean, people have got this idea about students. They're just they're, they're in the pub every they're, night. They're, they're in a bunch of shop. a bunch of wasters. Yeah, we've we've not been to a nightclub. We've not been to a nightclub in six six years because she has. This is a career. So I mean, not all. Really, you must go tomorrow night then. <laughs> I insist you get out. <laughs> no, we get out. You. We I think don't. you need to get out and, and, and rub tummies in the dance floor. Rub tummies, yeah. Yes. Well, we, could, uh, we could if we wanted to, but... Yes. I, mean, I think you, you must. Know the I insist you go. You know, the, are you going to fund this for me, Scott? I'm, yeah, just, I'm writing you a wee chitty here for right. the night, one of the top night spots, signing it, S. McClure. Right. That'll get you banned you for can life. Send, you can send me <laughs> maybe a hundred quid. That'll get, you, that'll get you banned for a hundred quid? Uh, that'll you can come... take You can take the whole radio station for that. Are you joking? When's the last time you were out, Scott? A hundred go. Oh, I haven't even been out for a while. Well, there you go then. <laughs> I'm studying, you see. Well, you studying, I'm studying right? anthropology on the radio. <laughs> but listen, get, get <laughs> a them, study of human behaviour. Get them, get it, get it, get it, get get it students a break. They're not all, they're not all, they're not all tagged. There is people at university that they are mucking around, but... There is also people that uh, educated people there who want to be there. They're, they're grafting and they're extra digitating. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so Excellent stuff. Listen, I wish you both all the best. And I think you need a night out tomorrow. Right, Scott. Yeah, I'll wait for the check. Gonna you no, no, no. Nobody. Come on now. You're an independent man. You know you can find the money to take the two years out. Oh no, I'd rather I'd rather spend the money and. and You'd and rather stay in. No, I wouldn't rather stay in. But uh, I mean, you know, how much books cost. You're, you're, you're talking. Forty quid for just one book, you know what I mean? Absolutely, but my clue's not on tomorrow, so you've got the night off. I will, will come up then, come up and give me my money and we'll, we'll go out for a, a quick <laughs> swift half. A swift half, right. with a hundred quid. Aye, right, good. <laughs> got the buyer's road and we'll have a few a, beers a couple, then. A couple of slammers. You can take it for a curry. <laughs> and I might get you a bird up a post. That sounds fabulous. Thank you very much for the offer. <laughs> we we'll might just cut straight to the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Right to the telephones, folks. 0141 You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live on Q96, the big one, the country's top radio station, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone's listening to. Talk radio for Scotland and for the world. Stay on the line. All sorts of subjects are discussed. I'll run very, very, very briefly through. We're talking about the students tonight. A lazy lot of layabouts, sponging off the state. Unprecedented stress, I say. That's probably drink and drug-related. Soaring debt. Uh, they're just, they just can't handle their money. Time pressures. They're kipping all the time. So, I mean, I wouldn't uh, lend the students any money. I would stop all that student loan nonsense and say, if you want to study, you fund that yourself. Uh, also, life sentences for cruelty to animals. Uh, has uh, new labor policies actually clobbered the family unit, getting rid of marriage and everything? And uh, should John Prescott have to give up his perks um, just because of a wee flutter there he was flying the flag and um, I say has it any effect on his political skills also should we stop women from drinking uh, young women are now binge drinking more than men and uh, we need our young women to bring up the next generation of uh, strong fit people I say so there you are also we've touched on this before but should we look at a new British Empire right I think think the world was never better than when it was administrated by us and I'm wondering if we should look at going back to a new British Empire. 0141429 0960. I'm talking to Phil who's in Paisley about the justice system. Are you still there Phil? I'm still here. Scotty. Well stayed on sir. Those are the clap to you. Excellent. Hey. Now then. I was going to talk about the justice system but I decided to change my mind after you're grown up. You've changed your mind, okay. Uh, that, means, that means I'll have to change mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a wee bit too hard on students, to be honest with you. I think certainly some of them uh, are milking it a wee bit, but I, I don't know. I, I do know quite a few folk. They're great at swinging the lead, the students, though, aren't they? I mean, they've got it down to a fine art. Well, I, I mean, I think they do get a lot going their way for them. I mean, once you come out of university, you know... Working life is a lot different than it is oh, in yes. school and college. Oh, yes. You know, I think, and they talk a lot on time deadlines. 
you know. I mean, time deadlines. I mean, if you're keeping in till maybe, you know, one in the in, in the afternoon, no wonder uh, you're on time deadlines. I mean, don't get me wrong, Scotty, I love deadlines. I especially love that fishing sound they make as they go flying by. <laughs> You're a very funny man. Right, I'm talking to Bill, who's in Battlefield. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. You there, Bill? Can you hear me? Right, Ian and Cardonald. Hello, Ian. How you doing, Scotty? Very Thanks well, so nice to hear you. You up the belly nose tonight? How you doing, my man? <laughs> Good to hear you, anyway. And you. Right, just basically talk about the, the women and the drinking tonight. What do you think of that young girl who's going to get drunk? I think it's an absolute disgrace. And I'll tell you something else. Our young women show us up abroad, you know. They're going about, they're, they're dropping their drawers, they're showing off their tops, and they're screaming and shouting. And the people in Spain and Portugal and Bulgaria and Gran Canaria and all that, they're wondering what in earth kind of country their people are from. You know, these, these uh, you know, screaming banshees it's terrible Scottish. it's a disgrace we need to get back to and we need to control young women we controlled them for years and then the second you let them off the hook they're away damaging themselves and showing up their country and I say get them back into staying in the room in the house doing embroidery and doing uh, the, doing uh, the cooking Petty points, you know, petty point, uh, doing the cooking, uh, seeing to the man, giving him a good seeing to in, in, in the bedroom at night. All the things that women are actually designed for. I exactly, Scotty. You I know, instead you of uh, out driving cars, out brings drinking and screaming in the street and just generally misbehaving because uh, women are less, uh, they've just got less of a grip on life than men, you know? I know, we, we take it seriously and they don't, mate. That's the way it is. I think that's the whole thing. I think men are programmed to take life a bit more seriously. But we need to stop the girls drinking, because the other thing is, they may well damage their bits and pieces for having the bambinos. Ah, exactly, mate. Old ones and the, 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 the men are wanting to keep the old bloodline going, aren't they? Ah, you're spot on, Scotty. You see, so I think we've got to get the message across to the women. Stay well, put, in the hoose. And we've got to the nation tonight, yep, Scotty. Absolutely, and if to say to their mothers and Fathers, keep me at home and train me for marriage. Yes, exactly, Scotty. Where I can serve my husband and children best. There's not many people like that nowadays. No, and that's a lot of that's to do with the left-wing socialist policies of the last nine years. Yeah, you're spot on. You're exactly it's, right. It's damaged the family unit, and we must get back to and the sooner. And it's damaged room. Scotland as well, hasn't it? Of course, of course. And at the end of the day, Scotland as a nation should look at that. Seriously, absolutely spot on, Ian. Love to Cardonald. Keep up the berry nails. Uh, we're talking to Chris, who's in Dumbarton. All right, Scotty. How are you doing, All Chris? Right, thank you, do. Thank you, do, sir. All right, just to talk about animal cruelty. Yes. Well, I just, I mean, these people are cruelty animals. I mean... Chris, to see for you talk with us, can you answer me a question? Yes. Is the Scotty McClure megaphone in regarded as very cool by all the school students? It is, actually. I thought that. I'll tell you. It's just... All these folk for Dumbarton, that was... I was telling them to listen to it. used to only me, and then I got out to listen to the Wally Peter and that. Everybody's listening in, Tell ten to tell ten. Tell ten to tell ten, yep. boys. That's what it's about. Yeah, my job. Good stuff. I just wanted to check with you. I thought, uh, if anybody knows Chris from Dumbarton, will know. <laughs> now then. Uh, just to talk about animal cruelty. Yes. Well, these people are cruelty animals. I mean, they must... I mean, they're evil. I mean, they're taking another... They're taking a life. They're I mean, taking they, a life, and they should forfeit their own. Exactly. I mean, they should be done for murder. I mean, yes. these innocent, defenceless animals getting killed. I mean, if they get starved to death, these people should be done for murder. I mean, I think it's just they should be, they should be, they should be thrashed in the middle of the main street. I mean, you, they love with the sword, die with the sword. Absolutely, good man. Hey, listen, I've I've been hearing whispers that there's going to be big developments in Dumbarton soon. Is there? Aye, so it's it's going to be the place to be. I think we need a, a good development in here. You can't, you can't be a good development. I know. That's what I say. <laughs> so there, and then we'll get down there for the shopping and get parked at the river. Aye, you wouldn't have to come down shopping now. It's like a ghost town down <laughs> It's quite the day. Aye, it's just all pubs. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I remember they were all queuing up one day at barn and I says, what's the queue for? And this guy turns around and he goes, they've shut the veil. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll catch up with you soon, lad. Right, Scotty, catch. Hey, dinky do. Now then, <coughs> oh, do I do beg your pardon? I do apologise. Guests in people's houses there, cover your mouths. Uh, Martin and Battlefield. <laughs> right, good stuff. I don't even bother with you, Martin, because you're a fathead. Right now, Shinane Easter House. 
Good evening, Scotty. How are you? Good evening, my dear. I'm not too bad for my age. Just one second, you know. There's one line for you folks. Have you been ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and redialing and redialing and redialing since 10 o'clock sharp? Try your hand now on 0141-429-0963. If you haven't been able to get through, you might be lucky. On the other hand, you might not. It depends how quick off the mark you are. Sorry, Sheena. I'm always lucky. I, I just thought I'd better tell the nation, darling. I'm always lucky to get through to you, Scotty. And thank you for my wee letter. It was lovely. Mm, okay. Yes. But don't you be going to my bother. Spelling, my spelling was a wee bit... Your spelling's perfect. Nothing wrong with your spelling. I didn't get taught as good as my daughter. Was it your spelling? I thought it was my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if, you, if you hadn't told me, I'd have thought it was my my, my bisexual glasses. I try to eat neat. I try to eat right neat. Nice and neat. Sorry, the bifocal glasses, I mean. Mm. Yes. Very well, neat. I try no bad. I try bad, no bad in my spelling. I think you've done very well. I think you should give yourself a pat in the back. It's quite a difficult thing to do, you know. Mm. Have you ever tried sticking your tongue out and saying ta-ta? No, but I like to talk about the students. Have you ever tried that? They'll try it. What? Stick your tongue out and say ta-ta. I bet I know I've seen ta-ta at you because I like to talk about the students. I mean, just try it. See, see how you get on. But ta-ta? Bye-bye. I'll try and sit my phone and go. Ah, it's no easy, I'll tell you. Now then. Right, students. Yes. You never see a poor student, do you know? You don't see a poor student, not these days. They can afford the designer stuff. Oh, yes, all the best of stuff. Right, my daughter's just left Paisley University. Lovely, congratulations. She's there for five years. Excellent. She's graduating. That's good. But she wants to do business. Right. I don't believe in grants, because how's she going to get money to pay it back? Exactly. And she's only 21. (laughs) You know, but she'll get money doing business. Aye. You know, that's quite well paid, isn't it? She got a doctor award at school as well. What's that? She got a doctor award at primary. She got the ducks as well? Right. Oh, fantastic. So she's brainy, but she's, I mean... She's sorted. She takes after her mum. Mm. Eh? Better than her mammy. Not at all. There's nobody better than a mammy. 0141 is the telephone number. And uh, you're listening to Scotty McClure live on Q96. As if you didn't know that, that's the big one. That's the one everyone's listening to, the one everyone's talking about. Right now, I hope you've all got the telephone number down big style. If not, I'll have to give it to you again. We'll, we'll do it in style, though, I'll say. Ladies and gentlemen, it's phone number time. 0141 963 Phone number time live on Q96 0141 429 0963 Right, Bilko and Battlefield Thank you, dear Scotty. Thank you, dear China. How are you? Not bad, Scotty. He's not phoning up. See these students, you're slagging these students, and I think you're over the top with them. In what respect? I mean, I'm pretty near the bone, aren't I? I'm pretty correct. Right, Scotty. So leave them up for complaining. Is, see, we think the students on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've been out of business. The same with keeps us going. They're after your bread and butter. That's because they're loaded. Ah, they're loaded. Of course they're loaded. They're they want to be taken for the night. They're loaded. They've got money. They've got plenty of money. You guys would be out of business if the students were only there. Exactly. So why give them? Why slag them off? They're doing a great thing, these students. Yeah, but you must think in the back, even although you're taking the money, you must think these kids stink. Oh, they stink my poos. I'm just jealous. Because yeah. that's the idea of things they do. <laughs> so I've heard. John and Penny Lee. All right, Scotty, how are you doing? Yeah, all right, John, dinky you do. Dinky you do, how are you doing? No bad for me, Joe. Right, Scotty, I want to talk about against the women working. Yes. Why should women not work? Well, they shouldn't work until there's full male employment, and they shouldn't work if they've got a kid under 16. Scotty, I've got a wife who works, and I don't work, and why should she, she not work? I want to make sure she works, and I am... Um, can you can you, can you not work? I can, yeah, I've got a broken leg. Right, well, that's a, that's a, that's a fair reason. I'll accept that. Uh, Armitage and Dumbarton. How you doing, Scotty? Think you do. Think First you do. Caller. Ah, welcome to the show. Nice to hear you. I thought you'd like some sensible conversation. I always like sensible conversation. If you've got any, I'll, I'll very gratefully accept it. Certainly, I want to talk about the student, Scotty. Just one second, Armitage. Another line for you, folks. That's twice since 10 o'clock. You're doing exceptionally well on here. 0141 429 0963. Sorry, Armitage. Yes, uh, what I want to say is I graduated last summer from university. Congratulations, and, uh, congratulations. Yes, Good yes, man. Yes. Have you got a job? 
Uh, no, that's what I want to discuss, Scott. Ah. Uh, I actually regret going to university. Ah, and now I, please, I really... please, please don't ever do this. Don't regret going to university. This is a blip in your career. Yeah, just just let me finish, Scott. I'll say my piece and I'll tell no, you why. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're mm. saying. Yeah, it's, it's a, uh, I'm quite proud of the achievement and uh, I know something will be so taken away from me. So you but, should um, be. I'm not proud. Uh, I'm happy I went to university. I'm just not happy at the way I've not been able to get a job since then. I went to a, a good. I went to the Strathclyde University. It's, called, it's, a, it's a good university. That's a fine university. Yes, Did you I mean, study engineering? No, I studied physics, Scotty. Physics, right? Okay, yeah. so a science subject, yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, I keep reading how there's a shortage of uh, physics graduates and things like that. But any time I go for a job, Scotty, I can't get one. And uh, now, listen, uh, are you going for a job in uh, in, in in the physics field? Yes, are, you, are, you, are you going for a job yes. in in uh, in industry? Yes, I've tried and failed. Have you? Have you? Uh, would you be interested in teaching physics? Yes, I've applied for that, Scotty. That's always a good thing to have. Yes. You get your. Have you done your uh, one year teacher training? No, I've signed up for that, Scotty. But anyway, well, because well, I, well. I'm thinking, does the old Jordan Hill College not uh, not have the uh, Strathclyde not responsible now for the old Jordan Hill College? No. Yeah, they are, yeah. But so, they, uh, so they'll have a teacher training facility attached to Strathclyde University? Yes, certainly, but I'm going off, we're going off the track here, Scotty. Jordan um, Hill Campus. No, I'm just checking yeah. with you. I'm just checking yeah. that you've got all this sorted here. Yeah, yeah, it's all sorted and set up. But, um, one thing, my, my grandfather, he was a plumber, and uh, he can he can get a, afford a car until he was 50, and uh, he lived in a council estate all his life. Yeah, but that but, was uh, that was uh, the no, days when yeah, plumbing, yeah, plumbing let wasn't me finish, well Scotty, Let me finish, Scotty, let me finish. No, no, but I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, yes, I know that. But nowadays, uh, um, once uh, you're, you've done your apprenticeship and uh, plumbing, done your four years, you're guaranteed at least 25 grand a year. Now, I know plumbers who are dri- my age, younger than me as well, driving about BMWs with their own house. They're in an absolute fortune. And there's me thinking, oh, I've been told, go, go do your standard degrees, do your hires, go to uni, and then you'll get a job. Uh, you can't get a job now, Scotty, because there's listen, far too many students. Listen, there's far too many listen, universities listen, out there. Listen, you're, you're, you're talking out your wheeler here, right? Let, All right. Let, 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 let me just reassure you here. Sure. A, you've done exactly the right thing by getting your qualifications in school, by going to university, and you, you've graduated, Yes. Yes. Right, you've got a very good qualification, physics. It's very sought after, right? You can you can diversify into a lot of things from that. Now, what you're needing to do is just widen your horizon, and if it's a job you're wanting, you'll get one. Look at old McClure, right? I've been all over the UK. Mm-hmm. Right, there, there are jobs there. You've got to widen your horizon and narrow your focus. Yes. You've got to, knowing what you want to do is the first step to achieving it. Yes. And if you uh, make the decision, you say, that is what I want to do. Now, it could be aerodynamics or wind tunnel testing or whatever. I don't know, you know, what jobs are available to somebody with a physics degree, but you will do design, um, computer work, blah, 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 electronic. We're getting, we're getting off course here. I'm no, no, we're not getting problem. off course. We're actually no, getting... No, you see, this is where you're wrong. Yeah, I've not we're, really made the point we're I want getting to make. On, yeah, but there's plenty of time to make your point. All I'm saying is we're getting on course here. Because uh-huh. if this alters your thinking even a tad, right, uh-huh. towards getting you a job, then we're yes. on course. Now, yeah. what is your point that you're desperate to make, please? Well, we're saying that it's costing too much for the, the students uh, nowadays. Uh, do you know I think that's because uh, in the last 10 years or so they've made a lot of the metropolitan colleges into universities? I mean, there's far too many universities about just now, and there's too many people going to university well, listen, why, and doing why, silly why? courses like media studies. Well, and then I'm sorry, so, no, but I'm sorry, hold, 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 hold on, no, no, hold on a second. I'm sorry, but media studies is not a silly course, right? Uh-huh. It all depends on how it's taught and, again, what the people taking it up want to do. Yeah. Right, so I mean, I won't have any subjects, particularly anything to do with the media, rubbished, right? Because oh. any form of education, any improvement in your skills base, any increase in your knowledge and understanding of something, you're on to plums. Mm-hmm. Do you know, it's, it's an absolute winner. Now, there are not too many universities and colleges. You can never have too many universities and colleges. 
Yeah, I, I disagree with that. I think there's far too many no, people well, going you, you to college and university. Well, no, there's not too many there's people going to college. people doing basic jobs. Mm, you, well, th that's I, why there's I think, jobs I think, no, doing the I, basic I th jobs. Yeah, I think that's a point, but I also think that people should get the qualifications. And I think that you're making negative points here. You need to make positive points. Why do they have to make positive points, Scotty? Because that's what is required for life if you want to succeed. If you oh. want to sit and make negative points, fine. But don't expect anyone to agree with you and expect yourself to become very quickly Billy No Mates. Billy No Mates, okay. <laughs> so well, that, that's what happens yeah. when you make that. I'm just telling you, I'm just, this is to save you the bother of going through all that, right? Because you're a good man with a good future ahead of you. I can tell by talking to you. But you need to change your attitude. It's, I don't think it's a, a negative point, Scott. I'm just uh, thinking there's too many students at universities at the moment. Just now. I'm not no, saying no, that. No, no, you're making all sorts of excuses. Point, yes, but, yeah, but you're some argument. Yeah, but you're making... arguments I can make some of the things a positive point, maybe just because I'm disagreeing with you. You're seeing no, no, a negative you're, it's point. Not, no, it's not because you're disagreeing with me, because you're not actually disagreeing with me. I never huh. said that there were too few. You see, I mean, you know, th there are there are a good number of educational institutions out there, but we need to start processing people. But we also need to tie up a policy that matches up with the skills requirements in this country. Yeah, I and agree I, with that. And I think that's where we need to be heading. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think we're doing that. There's too many people going to university, and therefore there isn't enough people taking up other jobs. Yeah, but they can go to university and then take up the job. I mean, there's nothing wrong with actually coming out as a fully qualified physics graduate and becoming a plumber. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not talking about other basic jobs, though, as well. Like, you know, the, a lot in the hotel industry, uh, working as waiters and stuff. Yeah, but there's stacks of people. Listen, there's honours graduates running about as waiters. There's honours graduates sitting on the checkouts in the supermarkets. Yeah, so what's the point in them going to uni for four we could have started that four years earlier. Because made more they've money. got a future and a sense of hope, and they will end up, if they're any good, working in the field. Yeah. That's okay. what it's all about. So there you are, I promise you. Sure. Right, I'll let you go anyway, Scott. Thumb I don't want to take up too much of the line. Thumbs up to you. That's all what right. I say. All right, bud. There we go. I'm not disagreeing with you. I think we're singing from the same hymn sheet. Jim from East Kilbride. Are you there, Jim? Hello, Jim from East Kilbride. Can you hear me? Right, I'm going to have to dash and talk to Ian and Pollock. Hello, Ian. Hi, right, Scotty. How are you doing, mate? How are you doing, bud? Dinky do. Dinky do. Just to talk to you about the smoking ban in Scotland. What do you think of that? I think Scotty? it's excellent. I think it's absolutely first class, Ian. We need more. I think it's excellent as well because at the end of the day, you can get a pub now, you don't need to listen to that smelly smoke. What do you think you of that? You don't have to come home stinking. It's good stuff. Right, Kirky and Battlefield. How we doing, Scotty, my friend? How we doing, Dinky do? Scotty, I'm only complaining. I yep. picked up a higher than right? Yep. The woman got in the back of my taxi. Do you know she refused to get in my taxi because I was listening to you? Oh, well, so you don't want it anyway, so don't what? complain. You just don't want these the people. Scotty. If you don't want to see Scotty, you don't want to see my taxi. Absolutely. Like Chase them, Kirky. That's what I say. Don't take anybody in the taxi who won't listen to the phone in. For the, Don't get into a taxi that doesn't have the phone in on. If it doesn't have Q96 and Scotty McClure on after 10 o'clock at night, uh, Sunday to Thursday, don't use the taxi, no matter what's on the side of the taxi. Peter from Dumbarton. Hello, Scotty. Hello. It was about the the dog. See the dog that get abused. Yes. Uh, it I, was I, starved. Uh, yeah, but I think they should get a sentence. But I'm not sure we like, all animals because you need to like, like, chop chickens up and chop cows up to make food. Ah, to make food. That's a different thing from me. Uh, but these these animals are not maltreated in the same way. Ah, uh, but I know a few people that's got a uh, pet chicken and that. Uh, yeah, well, well, if they've got a pet chicken, they want to just ensure that it doesn't end up as food. I think that's the thing. They want to treat it as a pet, and they want to look after it. And then you'll get the eggs, but don't put all your eggs in the one basket. Oh one four one four two nine oh nine six three. You're listening to Scotty McClure, and uh, we're live in Q96. Surprise, surprise. We're talking to Andy, who's in Ibrooks. Hello, Andy. I thought uh, I told you that it's only once a night, Andy. I know, Scotty, but I'm Well, come on, you will need to stick to the rules. Right, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Uh, my name's John. John, good evening. I'm Scotty. What can I do for you? Uh, well, all I want to talk to you about is drop bums, Scotty. Drop bums from Barnsley? 
That's correct, my friend. That's Radio <laughs> Allen, many years ago. Absolutely, yes. Great <laughs> to hear from you. How on earth did you find us? Uh, well, I'm doing missionary work in Scotland. Missionary work in Scotland, that's wonderful. The drop bombs in Barnsley, yes. If you go to Barnsley, you'll see that the women's bombs are definitely below the national average. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And are you enjoying yourself up here? Yes, superb. Ah, you'll be missing Barnsley, though, are you not? <laughs> hey. You're, you're, sorry, I missed that. I am. I, mi I miss Yorkshire as well. Do you, mate? Oh, I love it. like a boss from past. I, I just tuned the radio in, and there you are. You thought it's McClure. <laughs> doing his little dinky do bit, mate. Doing, you, doing the dinky do bit and all the rest of it. And you're doing your missionary work in Scotland. That's correct. Fantastic. Listen, I'm going to have to dash. All right, love. Take care of yourself. Lovely to talk to you, love. Take care. Ta-da right. now. That's it. The lad from Barnsley.